Hello, welcome to PM Talks, where we talk about all things project management. Thank you for joining us today. We look forward to having such a great discussion. Today, we want to talk about how to build an effective project team. Last week, we focused on the top five skills of a successful project manager, which are communication, leadership, planning, time management, and problem solving. While it is tremendously an asset to have these skills, these skills are only as good as the project team you have with those skills to help you successfully deliver the project. Now, let's not forget we do need those skills, but if your team is not effective, then it's going to be hard to really deliver the project successfully. Now, being a very strong project manager with those skills, you might be able to work some things out and get it done, but you also need the help and the support of a strong, effective project team. So let's get into it. In order to build an effective project team, you really have to understand the requirements of the project. That means working with the client, the business sponsor, the customer, whoever it is that is setting forth this need to have this project implemented. They will tell you, and you may work with you know, some business analysts, some other stakeholders to really help flesh out or build out those requirements. But your goal initially is to really understand that scope so you can definitively document the requirements of the project. And once they are documented, make sure, or once they have been determined, make sure they're documented and you have resources and team members that can help with that, such as your business analysts. But you make sure they are documented and they are understood and they are agreed upon between the project sponsor or the client and the project team and any other key stakeholders. So again, number one, you want to fully understand the requirements of the project. Once you have a clear understanding of the requirements of the project, then you will be able to determine, okay, these are my deliverables, these are the tasks, these are the activities. You want to break down the deliverables, which are based on the requirements into the smallest workable tasks that could be done. So once you've done that, you will need to understand what type of resources would I need in order to get the, those tasks or those smallest work items completed, which roll up into deliverables. So it all rolls up into the overall project, right? Whatever that breakdown of that work is, which is based on the requirements. So you have to understand what type of resources will you need to get that work done. Those resources can consist of and will most likely, definitely, internal resources. So you will have BAs, you have developers, testers, architect, you name it. Whatever those resources look like based on the work that has been broken down per the requirements, you need to identify who they are, what those resources are. They can be internal. They can be external. They can be suppliers and vendors. You may have to outsource some of the development part of the work. So you may have a vendor or you may have to purchase equipment from a supplier or a vendor. But you definitely need to understand the resources of the project. Okay. Once you have a full understanding of, okay, who is going to do the work? Who do I need to get this done? You want to properly assign those resources in order to complete those deliverables and tasks of the project. So again, know what those skills are that are required. Know the resources that are required. Once they have been identified, then you want to properly, uh, properly assign them. Meaning, you know you need a developer but you can't assign a developer to write the, the business requirements. <laughs> you need the developer to code <laughs> those, those pieces of work items. So, and you need the business analyst to 
fully flesh out, understand the business requirements, to document the business requirements, what have you. Just to give you an example. So you need to make sure you properly assign who's doing what and make sure those expectations are clearly set based on the assignment of the work per the resource to the work. So after you've made those assignments, you want to set the proper expectations of the project and your team members. And setting the expectations of the project really goes back to the requirements and understanding the goals and objectives of the project. What is it that we're trying to do? So you've identified what it is we're trying to do. You've identified, okay, who needs to do this type of work? You've also made the assignments. Hey, we need this developer to complete this coding function. We need a tester here to test it out. So you've made the proper assignments. You want to, and that goes back to just really understanding the expectations of the project. But you also want to set the proper expectations of the team members, meaning, okay, you know, this is the work that has to get done. So before we even get to completing the work, let's just make sure we all respect each other. So just set the ground rules and make sure you begin setting the ground rules by being that example of yourself. I spoke about that the other week in regards to the skills that are required and leadership is one of them. And just being able to set that example, demonstrating the skills that you want to see in your team members. So let it all start with respect. Respect yourself, respect others, and respect the expectations of the project, meaning we know the goals and objectives of the project. We know the constraints, and I haven't really gotten into that, meaning, okay, this is our timeline, this is our budget, those details. Just really making sure all those expectations of the project are clearly put out there, identified and documented, And you respect those expectations by adhering to them, by meeting the requirements of the project, by making sure you respect each other, by making sure you set the proper expectations for your team members, meaning, okay, you're going to do this work, you're going to do that, and we're going to make sure it gets done by this XYZ date. So setting the proper expectations of the project and the team members is another key thing you will need to do in order to build your effective project team. That also can consist of setting the meeting guidelines, saying, you know, this is our meeting cadence, you know, what are the expectations of the meeting? Hey, make sure you attend or or join the meeting. I don't, you can't really you, you can't really tell people what to do, but you can set the expectations of what is expected. Of course, everyone will be working on different schedules, but pretty much set some sort of guidelines around your meeting or just, just set some good expectations by just being consistent and um, having um, some sort of uh, some guidelines that are that are just, just good common sense fundamental guidelines, such as having consistent dates that you meet on, having uh, an agenda so you can know what the flow of the meeting would look like, addressing uh, issues, um, tabling, you know, bringing up the concerns, but maybe having a separate meeting to address uh, issues that can't really be resolved within that status update meeting. And I'm going on a tangent here, but my point is you just want to make sure you set the proper expectations of the project. Again, going back to the requirements and the goals and all that. And you also want to set the proper expectations of the team members, meaning, okay, hey, this is how often we're going to meet. This is what I require when you when you attend the meeting. Maybe you can give you an update at the meeting or maybe you can send your update via email or maybe update this tool. Again, just set, give your team members those expectations. And so you want to make sure each team member knows and understands what they are responsible for. Again, going back to making sure you assign your members or your resources properly. Okay, so I think I've spoke enough about setting the proper expectations of the project 
as well as the team members. Mm-hmm. Just want to make sure people know what they're supposed to do and, and any expectations you have of them, because it will be a little, little silly to think people can read your mind. So as a project manager, the leader of the project, just set the right expectations, whatever you think they should be. And I would just throw a word of advice to you. Just let it all begin with respect and making sure um, once you start with the respect of each other, then just set the right expectations, base it off of the requirements of the project, make sure people know what they're supposed to do. So there's no um, ambiguity, there's no confusion, you know, it's crystal clear. That way people can get things done, especially if we're all professionals here. It's just, it's, it just makes for a better, smooth, uh, smoother transition of the project execution if, if we all know what we're supposed to do, what is required. Okay, so let's move on to the next item I want to help you understand on how how to build this effective team. And that will be establishing and maintaining consistent communications with your team. Again, I mentioned one of the key skills of a successful project manager is communication. So you want to make sure you hone in on those communication skills because communication is the vehicle of your project success. You have to be able to communicate. You don't have to be some eloquent speaker, but you have to make sure you communicate properly and effectively so that your message is delivered, is consistent, and um, people can expect that from you. So how does that look? How can that look? Provide, have regular meetings with your team. So in your meetings, again, going back to setting the expectations, set those expectations of those meetings. You may have a status meeting that is about weekly. You may have that meeting weekly. Whatever you decide to do based on the requirements of the goals of the project, just, you know, whatever you decide to do with that regarding a meeting schedule, be consistent with it. And of course, things may pop up and and you may have to cancel, but make sure you set the expectations when you do have to cancel a meeting. Hey, we're canceling today. I know this is a light week. Most people will be on vacation, but please make sure you send in your updates. Let me know where you stand with your project and how they deliver those updates to you. Set those expectations as well. So again, just being really concise with communication and that goes with uh, setting regular meeting schedule, just making sure you follow up and provide meeting notes after the meeting so that way everyone is clear on what was discussed. Also, follow up with your team members as necessary because follow up is a part of communication. So, Key points here, establish and maintain consistent communications, because sometimes we establish the communications, meaning, okay, we're going to have regular meetings and um, we can send in status reports or, or provide status updates at those meetings. But the key is also maintaining that being consistent, maintaining the communication. So continue with your regular meetings. Sometimes you may have to adjust your meeting cadence, meaning, okay, you may start out meeting monthly because, no, let's, well, month, bi-weekly because the project is really, really huge and you're at a slow phase in the planning part of it. So you may just need to meet bi-weekly every other week to build out that plan. And, and of course, the, 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 the end date of the project is just so far out, or you really hadn't even determined that yet because you're planning. Then at some point when you move into execution, okay, we the, the work is being done now. So we need to meet every week in order to make sure we stay on top of the work that's being done. And I'm just giving you an example. You may start out meeting weekly and just continue meeting weekly, but it just depends on your project. But my thing is just be consistent with it. And if it needs to change or adjust based on how things are moving with the project, then make that adjustment and then be consistent with that. But also, so the goal here is to make sure you establish and maintain consistent communication. So 
Don't start it and then let it drop off. You have to maintain it, meaning you have to have your regular consistent meetings, provide meeting notes to make sure people have uh, the, the details of what was discussed in the meeting and um, even upload them on your, your different, um, the tools that you use, the portal, wherever you store your documentation. That way people can go back and visit. You always want to leave a paper trail um, and, and document what has been discussed. It's essential. It's vital. And then, of course, you'll be up updating your project plan along the way, too. But I'm getting into some really nitty gritty details. I, I don't really want to have to get into all of that. But just to give you some examples of what I'm talking about. However, so my point is just make sure you have those regular meetings. Provide meeting notes. All of this is a part of communication. And follow up with your team members quite often. Because, yes, it's good to have your meetings. It's good to make sure you have notes so people can know what's going on. And then even your status reports. That's another means of communication. Because now, even though you've documented what has occurred in the meeting, you also have to provide or you should provide some sort of status report to all the st stakeholders. And and there are key stakeholders, but then there could be multiple stakeholders. A stakeholder is anyone who has some sort of interest with your project. So you may have key stakeholders like your project team members and your business sponsor, uh, the people who have a direct uh, investment with the project, the, the outcome of the project. But then you may have some people that just may only care about the project because they may have a project that's starting soon and that can't start until this project is complete. Or they may be a user of the, the actual outcome or product of the project down the road. So you never know. So my point is, at some point, you have to provide status reports so everyone, all your stakeholders can have an idea of what's going on with the project because every stakeholder won't receive your meeting notes. That just goes out pretty much to your project team members and maybe leadership, but leadership will typically want the status reports. They don't want to get into all the, the nuts and bolts. They want that the highlights, right? So they can just have a touch on what's going on. And so the point that I was getting there is you'll have your meetings, you'll send out your meeting notes, you'll, you'll provide status updates or status reports or create them and send those out. But there will be times where you have to just follow up that's with team members that's outside of your regular meetings. You, you may not need to wait until the next time you meet. So follow-up is very important as well because you can prevent something from growing or escalating if you just do the due diligence and follow-up and make sure people are staying on task with something. It could be an issue that has actually arisen. And so you want to make sure the issue gets addressed and resolved in a timely manner and time could be of the essence. So follow-up is just so critical and um, in, in, in your communication, because it keeps things from falling through the cracks. It keeps uh, issues from blowing up to mountains. And um, it just is part of just being an effective project manager, because you want to make sure things are getting done. And if there's a need to follow up, then please do so. Again, all that goes back into establishing and maintaining consistent communications with your team. Now, after you've done all that, the next step or task you will want to do in building your effective team is to foster team bonding. And, and I don't want to say next task is if you have to do everything I just mentioned in order. Some of it is sequential, but some of it, it goes together, meaning establish and maintaining the maintaining the consistent communication goes along with fostering the team bonding. So in order to build a good, strong, effective team, 
you want to make sure you're communicating with them well, but you also want to try to foster or facilitate team bonding. Take the time to get to know your team. Don't just allow it to be about work. Although I know some of us just want to get the work done. I've, I've, I've had that attitude for a while now. Just, just let me get the work done. I just want to know what I need to do and get it done. That's why setting the proper expectations is really essential to your project. So people can know what they need to do and they can get it done. However, it just makes for a much better collaboration when you 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 just really get to know, you bond together as a team. So not only do you care about the work that's getting done, you may actually just care about each other. And it just makes for a better working situation. And it it fosters and facilitates the delivery of a better product or just a, a success because now you're getting along. And you have to do that by really learning and engaging with your team members and don't just let it be about status updates. Okay, we meet on Tuesdays. Hey, everybody, let me have your update. Oh, good. All right, everyone have a good, great day. So <laughs> although it can be quick and to the point like that, but it is really going to be hard for you to really nurture the needs of the project and, and build that, that, that bond and, and help your team gel where they're performing in, a, in an excellent way. So you really need to gel together by getting to know each other, by really understanding how you can help each other out. Um, And so so you can really fill in the gaps because then you, you, you will get to know your team in a way to know that, okay, we have we have a gap over here and and I need to see if someone can step up and and be able to fill this gap. Your team members will be more inclined to do that. Of course, everyone wants to make sure, ensure the success of the project, but as a project manager, you are the most accountable for the project because you see the big big picture. Your team members should have, team members should have an idea of the big picture because again, this has been discussed, agreed upon, and they know what they're doing. But once they know what they're doing, they're typically focusing on that area that they are contributing. But you want to make sure you 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 have that focal point, which is the end goal, which meets the overarching requirements of the project. And in order to do that, you want to make sure that, you know, we're getting along and we're not just focused on our one piece. We're focusing on the greater good of the results of the project that is going to that is going to serve X Y Z or um, be able to provide X Y Z or be able to improve certain things, whatever the outcome is for the project. So you want to get your team thinking more in a unity, uniform fashion that we're in it together, and I'm not just plugging in my piece, and that just that is often a result of team bonding and and just really working together as a team, having that cohesiveness. And you develop that by getting to know your team and um, just have some small talk that can build into, no, you don't have to get real personal on the calls, but let your team members know that you care and you be the lead. Take that lead approach of, of making sure you're nice and you're pleasant and it's not just get it done, get it done, get it done. But it's more, I care about you as you're getting it done. And if there are issues that are, are, um, that develop with your team members, like personal issues, you want to make sure you have an understanding, uh, approach as well. And, um, so again, it just goes back to the respect that I spoke about earlier and just making sure your team, cares. It just goes a long way. You will get more work out of people, not saying that you're just trying to get work out of people, but you will be able to work together more effectively as a team when your team member knows that you care. And when you care, it just spreads over among the other team members. They will just work together, but it starts with you as a PM. If you want it to just be 
a collective emotion or or attitude right for your team now i mean individually people may have their their picks and they may already have work good work working relationship with some of them the team members but it starts with you from an overall team perspective to say okay we are a team that is cohesive and that gets along we bonded so take the time to bond with your team so that you can be more successful in delivering the project. I think it makes it a whole lot easier to get things done when you're able to connect at a deeper level beyond, okay, let me just look at my piece of work and I'm, I don't care about anything else. So work on that, building those, those team building moments and bonds that can carry over into the results of the project. And sometimes that may mean, hey, let's have an outside activity. It just, just, you can get creative with that. Or just set up some time during your meeting, especially early on when your team members are trying to just really understand the project. Maybe you can, you know, open up the floor about some non-work topics and, and even consider just a team building activity from time to time. Of course, no one has all this time to just be playing around in meetings. But, you know, sometimes you can incorporate something like that just to make sure your team members are just really doing, making it more than just about the work. Although that is what we're here for. But I think it makes for a better delivery of the project goals, the project's goals and objectives if if you're you've bonded as a team. And you can they your team members just perform well. It is tried true and it can be done. All right. So moving on to the next item. And this is so, so, so important. Hold your team members accountable. Right. So if you set the proper expectations that we talked about and you do the adequate communication that we discussed, you follow up when needed. But say someone is still not pulling or someone is not pulling their weight after all that has been done. You set the expectations, you followed up. Hey, John, um, I noticed that you have not really moved the mark on this item that's due in two weeks and you've been working on it for about eight weeks. You should be about probably about 70, at least 70 to 80 percent complete. And we're not there yet. What's going on, John? And, you know, you not to call him out in the meeting, but sometimes when you have your meetings, yes, make sure you hold your, your team members accountable in the meetings, meaning if there's some work that you were expecting them to do because they were assigned that work and it was clear that they knew they had to perform that work, ask them about it in the meeting. Don't just brush it over. And when they say, I don't have it, ask, be clear, make sure you understand what happened, what's going on. Do you need some help? Is there, some, is there something that is just not working? Is there an issue? Find out. Ask the right questions and hold your team members accountable for the work that they have agreed to do. And so when it gets to a point that you are, you know, being direct, as well as, like I said, you want to show respect and give respect, but you also have to make sure you get to, okay, meet the expectations of each and each meeting by making sure you know what has been done and completed or what's in progress. So while you're doing that, you also want to make sure, you know, you get a good understanding of what is going on, especially when things are not going the way they should go. And so you bring that up because there may be other people in the meeting that can help get to the root or the core if there appears to be an issue with performance or something getting done, right? Then if there's an issue with performance, I would suggest you have that conversation outside. That's a critical conversation that you can have with that team member one-on-one and then bring that to their attention. Hey, I see that, you know, 
we you, you missed the deadline here. You know, is there something that I can help you with? Is, is there something going on that is, do you have, do, what obstacles do you have in your way? And that's something that could have been called earlier, but maybe it was addressed, like I said, with the follow-up. But when you get to the point where, okay, the performance, it just really didn't happen. Have the critical conversation to find out what's going on. What can we do about it? And then if things don't change, if, if there's not a reasonable response or response that um, is agreed on or uh, in action that is agreed on, but then that doesn't happen, then you've given this person, you know, opportunity to fix. You've had the critical conversation to even, you know, let's see if we can get things back on track and things didn't happen. At some point, you want to loop management in and um, make sure this is addressed because you've tried it as a project manager, as a lead, by setting the right expectations, by following up, by having a critical conversation. Now it's time to escalate. And so do that because uh, it's out of your hands and your, it's out of your control now. So maybe their manage, manager can help spark something but it needs to be addressed. So there may be other protocols that are put in place for the company that you support to handle situations like this. But I say typically within a project team, you just want to make sure you do the the fundamentals right by setting the expectations, following up as needed, have a critical conversation, whether it's you know, hey, let me send an email or, hey, you have time for a quick call. Let's talk about some things, have that critical discussion and then escalate. And but the key is to resolve the conflict immediately and make sure your team members know that they are accountable for the work that they agreed to complete. That was that's their purpose on the project. So you want to make sure you hold them accountable to that. Not to be mean, but to know that, hey, we're all working professionals here. If we agreed upon this, then this is the expectation to receive it, you know, on such and such date or what have you. But um, make sure when you see early on that something is slipping, you go ahead and follow up and then, you know, start trying to get things back on track. And like I said, continue with some sort of approach, but it's all about holding your team members accountable because it's their job. They have a job to do. You have a job to do. All right. So quick recap on how to build an effective team. We want to know the requirements of the project, know what you're doing. Determine the resources that are required to complete what you're doing. Properly assign the resources to deliver or to assign those resources to the deliverables, the activities, or the tasks of the project. Then you want to set the proper expectations of the project and the team members. Hey, this is what we're doing. This is what you're doing. So you're basically reinforcing again, right? You want to establish and maintain consistent communications with your team. And while your team members are executing, should you foster team bonding so that your team members can perform well? And last but not least, hold your team members accountable. Hey, you agreed to this work. (laughs) So let's get it done. And likewise, as a project manager, hold yourself accountable because you will be held accountable for the overall project. Just know that. (laughs) So, you know, so make sure that people who are, who have agreed to do the work, Because they know the expectations and they know what they're supposed to do. Make sure they get it done. So hold them accountable that they agree to this and make sure they get it done. And when they don't, you follow up and then you address, you get it resolved quickly. And that is it. In a nutshell, that is how we want to build an effective project team. So thank you for joining PM Talks today. It's been a great discussion, and I hope that I have given you something, some takeaways that you will be able to utilize in in building 
and fostering a, a very strong, effective project team. So we definitely look forward to you joining us for our next PM Talks. Stay tuned as we discuss, help, my project is in trouble. So we want to talk about how to get your project back on track. All right, everyone, thank you for joining PM Talks. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.